Okay, so you're familiar with the first code of conduct, what might constitute a violation, and how to spot possible abuse. Now let's look at what you should do if you notice something that doesn't seem quite right to you. Now, most situations will fall into one of three possible categories. One, violations of the code of conduct other than abuse. Two, physical safety issues caused by risks other than abuse. And, of course, then, number three, actual abuse, whether emotional, physical, or sexual. Let's take the first category. What do you do if you become aware of a code violation? Let's say you're an adult working with a first team and you notice a violation, or you're not sure whether a behavior is appropriate or not. We're not talking about child abuse in this case, but you simply feel some behavior crossed the line. What should you do? Well, first, you are required to immediately contact a responsible adult who is not the person who crossed the line. That could mean a lead coach or mentor, an event manager, or the hosting school or organization. You are also required to report your concerns to the first youth protection department. You also fill out a non-medical incident report form, which you can find here, for making such reports. Now the second category involves physical safety in an area, such as a team working in a space that houses dangerous chemicals that are not properly secured. In situations like these, you're required to act right away to keep the team safe. You either remove them from the situation, or if it can be done safely, you remove the risk. If you suspect that the risk was deliberate or due to negligence, then it may be appropriate to report it to the host or event manager who may choose to involve local police. Now the final category, one we hope you will never encounter, involves reporting actual abuse. Just as in the first scenario, you are required to immediately report it to local authorities and the first youth protection department. Most states actually require this of all adults, including volunteers. If you're not sure what your state's requirements are, you can check your state's Child Protection Agency website, and we provide the links for you here. If the hosting school or organization has a procedure for reporting abuse, follow it. Do not try to confront the suspected offender yourself or conduct your own investigation, even if you know the person well. Finally, if you have any questions or you need some advice, the Youth Protection Department is available. If you have any concerns about the safety of children in our programs, you can contact us anonymously if you wish, and all information will be treated as confidentially as possible. Information is shared only as required by law.